Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to look into VCAG. We're going to create an input component which follows the VCAG 2.2 standard which has not yet come out but it will come out uh, later this year. So VCAG stands for Web Content Ac Accessibility Guidelines and it's a set of guidelines that is created by the World Wide Web Consortium, V3C in this case, to ensure that the web content is accessible to people with disabilities. So with other words, WCAG provides a technical standard for creating ac accessible websites and digital content, and it covers a wide range of disabilities, including visual, auditory, physical, cognitive, and neurological disabilities. So today we're going to look into this, and there is a couple of thumb rules, you would say. So one of the thumb rules should be that we provide clear and concise la labels. Um, in this case, we're going to use the four attribute in, in the labels that we're using. Uh, we're also going to look into appropriate input types. So for instance, if you're, if you're having a text, it should have the type text, or if you have an email, it should be email and so on. So we need to provide clear instructions and feedback. We need to ensure keyboard accessibility. In this case, for an input component, there's not too much. It's essentially being able to tap towards it and so on. But for instance, if you have a list, you should be able to navigate up and down in the list with keyboard navigation and so on. And that's something I will cover in, in another video. So what we want to do in Angular now, you could implement the same thing for React or Vue or basic HTML and, and CSS. So we'll go ahead and, and add a component called input component. So once this is done, we can jump into the input component that we have. So we'll add one input. We can first wrap it, say, uh, call it form control. And then within it, we'll have a label. And then we will have the for attribute that I talked about. So this should essentially match whatever we have within the ID here. So that we say to the screen reader, we say that when you read this label, it's connected to this field so that when when someone who has cognitive disability, they will be able to understand that here is where the content should come or essentially where the value should be filled. So what we can do in Angular now is we can create an input field. Let's go ahead and say input. Um, and here we'll call it type <clears throat> in this case. And we'll also give it an input ID, which it will take. Uh, remember that we cannot bind ID because that will be bound to the parent, which is a bit strange. So let's go ahead and just pass it through input ID. And usually what I do here is I just generate a random string so that you don't always have to pass it in. It would be more trivial if you would, but let's do this for now. So you have the type. Uh, in this case, we want the type to be a couple of different things. So the input should be able text, number, email, password, whatever you pass in. So what you can do now is we can generate a type. So let's call input type. And we have text, number, email, and password. I think this is good enough. So what we can do is we can give it this type. So when you try to sign something else, you receive an error. So you would have to come in here to change it if you wanted to. All right, so going back to the HTML now, remember we added the input ID. So we can go ahead and add the input ID here once again, so that now we are bounding the label with the input, but we have nothing to, to print within the label. So we also need to take a label as an input so we can print that. So we'll keep it an empty string. There might be cases where we do not want to have labels. So for those reasons, we'll have an ng if and say, if you have a label, print the label. If not, we'll not show it for them. And usually in many cases where we have these kind of uh, input fields, we, we usually want to have an help text. So we can go ahead and add an help text. So here's where my help text will be inserted. So keep in mind, we're creating something that can be reused among your whole, your, your whole application. So in this case, we're looking into creating something that can be reused and something that's going to be and follow the VCAC standards that we want. So let's go ahead and add the placeholder and the help text. So saving this, we can go back here. We have the help text. We can also go ahead and add the placeholder. Most likely we want to have a placeholder and this should also be placeholder. So now we have the input, we have the label, we have a help text, but how, they, how does the screen readers know that this help text is for this input field? So what we need to do now is essentially we need to add a area 
described by so that we tell the the screen readers that this one is connected to or essentially the field is described by this text so what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and say the id of this span element will equal to it will be the input id plus and we'll go with dash in this case uh, and we will say this could be the help so dash help so now we need to say that it's also up here we need to have the exact same logic because this is what will with what will tell the screen readers that whatever we have in the described is going to be described from this span element so the content of this will describe this input field so it will be much more convenient to understand that ah okay we have a screen reader it's described by that field and then they have a special set of tools that would automatically read this text for you for them so continuing with this it's not finished yet usually you have error fields and now we're, we're I've seen a lot of people struggle a lot so we'll go ahead and add a, a field here we'll say uh, instead of help here we'll just say error and the difference or the core difference here would be that we say we have a role and this is going to be alert and when you do this and you say role alert in this case it's going to tell the the screen right right that this one has occurred and it's being present now so in order for us to actually do this we need to set it here and we can have a space separated list in order for us to describe so an input field be, can be described by multiple things so what we want to do here in this case and usually i do not uh, recommend this uh, but for these cases, I would essentially say it would be better to bind it in this way. Scribe by, and then we'll have the input with help text, exactly like we have here. And if we have an error, we will print the error. All right. And this is only for the cases when we have an error. All right. So we cannot bind this. We need to add the atter attribute in the beginning. So now we can say that if we have a help in this case, but if we now just add it to the app components so we'll go ahead and add let's say we'll add the app input that we just generated and this app input would have an input id so we'll go ahead and say my input and you would have to say label my label of course the input id can be a string so we do not need to have the uh, the square brackets around it and now if you just inspect this quite quickly you'll be able to see that we have the area described by so input help and the help text in this case we do not have any help text so why do we have it in this input component so what we need to do is we need to conditionally remove it so ng if help text will show the help text so in this case now the help text should be removing from the dom and we can see we only have the error now but we also need to remove it from here so that the screen readers uh, isn't really b being uh, rendered so we have if we have an help text, we want we can say if we want a help text, we can print this. Otherwise, we want to print an empty string. So, in this case, now we will have let's see here. We only have my input error. So, what we can do now is let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this instead. So, we'll have the error message. And imagine now we would have a reactive form attribute. So we can go ahead and add an control i'm not going to use uh, form contr uh, control value accessor for this case because i think it's overkill we're trying to to show the the vcag standards and how it can be applied so we'll cover the value control value accessor in another uh, video that i have so continuing now we have let's see what we have we have an input and within the input we have the error and so on and you can see that this is already looking quite ugly so what we want to do now is essentially we can bind let's say here we can go ahead and do this we can say area describe by and in the input component ts file we can just create a getter here so area described by and here we will return something and we'll only return whatever we think is what we need all right so we'll have if this help text is set then we have this and if you do not have help text and this should be this is like this so we'll do like this const uh, described by items we'll just push it to the array i think this will be much more convenient so we'll do 
if we have an help text like this, we will push it to the described by items that we have here. And we're going to push this text. We do not need to have the question mark or the turning operator here anymore because yeah, it's not necessary. All right, so now we were pushing it and we can do the same thing with the control. So if you have control the errors, then we have an error and we should probably just print the error. And we will continue. So input ID and this is going to be error. So in this case, we can just remove this. We are going to push it so we can return this and we can join with a space in this way. So if we have one item, we'll join it by space. If not, it will not join it. So we can also say that if we have a length greater than zero, do this. Otherwise, we want it to be undefined. So saving now, saving now, we should be able to see whatever we have here. And you see, we, we don't have the describe by because we do not have any help text. We do not have any errors, which means it's behaving like it should. It should not even add it to the HTML because if it does add it to the HTML, it's, it's going to tell the program that the people using that, all right, uh, look for this field and it will try to look for it and it won't find it, which is quite bad in this case. So what we want to do now is we're going back to the app uh, and we're going to add an help text insert text to my field all right so now we will see that we have the describe by and the help text so it's being presented in this way obviously it looks quite ugly so let's go ahead and add a couple of different things so we'll go with form control which was the parent div and then we would have the label and would have the input we want to place them on separate rows so we'll go with display block for the input we want to have some padding let's say padding 8px and for the label, we want to add some margin bottom to be 4px, font weight, bold. Uh, and you'll see that we it, it certainly looks much better than it did before. So for the, for the help text, we can go ahead and add the class. Uh, so this is for the error class help text. So just to style it so that it looks like we want it to look. So we can have a, a bit smaller uh, text. Uh, for the uh, help text um, and if you go to the HTML here let's see what we have we have help text twice which is kind of strange so we need to just remove this so we'll say ng if control dot errors if we have errors then it's going to show the errors if not it's not going to do it so now we have the help text that we have here it's it's a bit smaller this is quite a common case we could just go ahead and add some margins here to the app components so that it jumps in a bit. Um, host display block margin 40 pixel just to get it in a bit uh, like this. It should jump in quite shortly, I thought, but it did not for some strange reason. All right, we're having some issues with saving this file. All right, so now we're, we're up to running. We have it a bit more into the screen, which makes it easier for us to preview. All right, so just looking at what we have now, we have described by because we have a help text. And when now we're going to trigger the error. So if we go to the input component, we're going to add the reactive forms here. So we're going with control and we're going to bind the actual form control with the control that we have in the TS file. And it will complain because we haven't added reactive forms module. So we need to go to the uh, app module and import reactive forms module. Let's see if it we have we have some intelligence. So import that from Angular forms. So going back here now, we should have the control. And let's say now we go to the TS file. We want to be able to pass a form control. So we create a control equals to new form control. And we're going to add, let's say we're going to add some validators. So we're going to say validators dot required. All right, so we have a required validator here. We're passing in it like this. And now we need to make sure that we're passing this into the input component so that it inherits the error handling from us. So uh, if you just look into this, um, we have the help text being printed, but we can also see that we have the error being printed immediately under it, which is quite annoying because now let's go ahead and add some styling to that and we remove so that the error message occurs before might look a bit better. We're going here. So help text and within the help text, we're going to have the 
this let's call this class error all right so we're going to say that the help text the error the input all of them we want them to appear on the their own row essentially so now we're going to say all right we have an error so the error error here for now we're going to add some color red font size 14 pixel font weight bold all right so this is what we could do let's also increase the help text i think it was too small before so we now we have the error message and and you see it's all bloated it's too too close to each other and obviously we have the same text being printed twice which is also a very strange thing um, so just imagine now we're going to manually enter the error message here but you should build a way that wh where you could standardize it so you'd say the and then we would have the label here is required all right so and here you'd say I enter something the error goes away and I can see now that I actually added it for the help text it should be added for the error instead so let's go ahead and swap that real quick so now we have it when I enter something their message is gone when I remove it it's back again and we should now have double um, if you go to the input label it should both have the input help but also should have the error and then the error should have the role alert which is going to tell the user that this is hey we're alerting that something is wrong here so this is probably an error message or something else that has occurred all right so and here is the text the label is the my label is required and this does not make sense to have my label let's go ahead and add that to name and all right the name is required and here you you instead of having insert text to my field you can write a help text saying enter your full name so this will tell the user that you should enter your full name it's like a help text and here is the name is required field so this my friend is how you can create a uh, vcag compatible input component which is going to be reused amongst your whole application it's going to follow the uh, vcag 2.2 standard which which has not yet come out it will come out so it obviously also fulfills the um, the uh, 2.1 standards as well all right thank you for watching guys all of the best bye